Now, we've just after culled uh, this fallow pricket, and I'm going to go through the proper way to grolic and inspect your carcass. Upon arrival at your carcass site, the first thing we do is we check the eye for reaction. If there's no reaction, that means that this deer is clinically dead. The next thing we do is we open the deer's mouth and we check for blemishes on the tongue. We can see everything looks normal there. There's no blemishes or blisters. Next, we move on to the hoofs. We open up the hoofs and we check for any blemishes or anything that would raise concern, sores, boils or blisters in between the feet, indicating foot and mouth. So we've checked that. The next part of our inspection, we visually inspect the carcass. And by doing this, we just start up here, feeling the whole way down feeling the body the whole way down, checking for lumps, bumps, or abnormalities. Anything that just shows concern. And that. Then we turn our animal over. And we do the same on this side. Starting here, we're watching out for any lumps, bumps, or abnormalities. Now, at this point, the visual inspection has been done, and we can move on to our grolic. The first thing we must do, we must bleed the animal. So, we make a cut in there. You can see the blood is already rushing out. Then, just grabbing the food pipe and the windpipe, give it a pull. And we'll cut that just above the vice box. We sever it there. Then we separate, we separate these two like that. We just scrape the food pipe. The reason I'm scraping it is just getting the slime and that off it then we can tie it off. This makes for a more secure knot. Now, the reason for this knot is to prevent any spillage inside our carcass when we pull this through. The next thing we do is we'll come around the back and we'll release the bum gut. A small cut, you do not go deep. The reason you do not go deep is because you do not want to sever the bladder and cause spillage inside our carcass. All the way around, following it around, then lifting it, being very careful not to sever the bum gut. As this is a male, just on the top is the prostrate gland and we sever that. So that's the bum cleared. Next we come up, we grab the testes and we simply remove them. Then we put our finger inside the pizzle and just remove the pizzle. It's very careful not to split the glands on the top of the pizzle as there would be a very strong odor and it would taint the meat. Next we make a small incision low putting her two fingers inside, being extremely careful, extremely careful not to hit any of the intestines causing contamination. The next thing we do is we lift that, we sever the diaphragm on one side, only on one side, down to the fillets. Then we reach inside, just be above the lungs and heart, and get the food pipe and pull that through. There we have that pulled through. Then the remaining diaphragm. Then we just reach inside here where we have the Boom, go to released. And the kidneys. 
You can see there the bladder and the bum gut is intact with no contamination inside our carcass. Now, at this point, we'll inspect our grolic. This all spreads out and opens up like a blanket. And that visually, that visually we can inspect all the glands around the small intestine there for redness or anything that might look odd or any abnormalities. We come along here, we can check the glands at the back of the lung for swellings or any abnormalities. We'll feel the lungs. They should be soft with no hard lesions inside. We can check the heart. There is a heart. Everything here appears normal, and imp imp which means that this animal has passed inspection and we've grolicked it best practice and as hygienically as we can with no contamination reaching inside our carcass. And that we started off with our visual inspection, the inspection of the carcass, and then we inspection of the grolic. And everything is done.